So what causes wind and rain and the direction they flow? Well, it has to do with high and low pressure. Now what causes high and low pressure? The sun. So an area that is being heated, the air will expand. If it's cooled, it'll contract. If the air contracts, then you have a low pressure system. So air from surrounding areas has to come in and fill the void. Well, when it comes together, it's driven up. Typically, unless it's in a desert, except for in that case, the air is driven up and it'll bring in moist air, so water, into the atmosphere. And now, here, it'll condense and precipitate. And then, I guess you'll have cloudy skies and rain. And that's a low pressure system. A high pressure system has the other effect. So an area is heated, the air expands, and then air from the atmosphere is driven down to fill that area where the air has left. And of course, like don't think about this as hot and this as cold particularly, because if, let's say it's Basically, it's colder, like this would be cooler than the general temperature. So this could be like 80 degrees, and the general temperature be like 84. So it creates an area where the air contracts. It just has to do with um, small temperature changes in, in specific locations or in broad locations over short periods of time. So... Here's just another example of the low pressure. So you see all the air coming in, but imagine this is a large low pressure system. So in this case, you have, you have other factors in play basically. So now this, in reality, would not go straight to a central point where that low pressure system is. You have, once again, the low pressure system now driven by the Coriolis effect, the turning of the earth, the rotation of the earth. So this, ima okay, imagine in the northern hemisphere, you have this point, and you have this point, different latitudes, right? So this latitude is closer to the equator, this is closer to the north pole. Well, I guess, I guess it'd be, yeah, the geographic north pole, all right? So yeah, I get that. You have the air being driven this way. Why is it veering to the right? Why is it veering to the right? So basically, imagine you're in a vehicle and you throw a ball out of the window. Where does the ball land? Well, it doesn't fall straight down, I'll tell you that. The ball still has the same forward motion as the vehicle. So as the vehicle is driving, the ball kind of moves alongside the vehicle until it hits the ground. So, so the same effect happens here. The air is pulled from a, a general location, this latitude, let's say to this latitude, but it's still going the speed of the Earth at this latitude. Now, it's faster as you get closer to the equator, because no matter where you are on the Earth, you have to go around the axis in 24 hours. This is closer to the axis than this. This is near the equator. I've said that like 12 times. Um, so yeah, it still has the g same general, it still has the same forward speed, and is driven to the right. And then you get a low pressure system where it kind of ends up in this direction. It goes counterclockwise. So the opposite happens with a high pressure system where the air is leaving a general area but still influenced by still influenced by the Coriolis effect. So everything goes clockwise. So low pressure system goes counterclockwise high pressure system goes clockwise and the general wind around these systems do that. So now I'll just show you. Here is an extra tropical cyclone that is just south of Alaska and east of some of the US states and British Columbia. You have this system and it's broad so these systems I mean this is just a good example of the Coriolis effect, you can see that it's going counterclockwise in towards the center. And you have another one right here. 
low pressure systems, like I said, in the northern hemisphere. And it is, it's, the winds are driven that way, it's cloudy, it's a bit rainy, and I'll show you that. You have a, also to note, you have a uh, low pressure system, like I said, going clockwise. It is, because it's in the southern hemisphere, it's just west of, no, 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 it's just east of New Zealand. Yeah, there we go. So, here's that system that's just east of New Zealand. And it's it's not that big. But this one right here is bigger. The one that I showed you, the one that's more broad, south of Alaska, west of the U.S. and Canada, right here. And it's a low-pressure system. You also have the remnants of of Douglas right here, which I actually didn't really think about before, but... But yeah, look how tiny it is. A tropical cyclone is a lot smaller than an extra tropical cyclone. And, oops, tropical cyclones become extra tropical once they get to a certain latitude and they're no longer driven by the heat from the ocean, from the uh, pre precipitation of the water from the ocean directly. And here is just the accumulated precipitation. But what's real nice is that it can show you this. It kind of has it kind of left a signature. It's a counterclockwise rotation. You can see where it's been raining. I mean, it'll build right there because that's where it's generally moving. And it's just a good graphic. So now, unless I explained poorly, which I probably did, let's be honest, you might understand high and low pressure. <laughs> that's all I have to say.